Buried in the sands of time is a king who refused to surrender in front of Allah. His name was Shaddad. People of his time were blessed with way more than we can ever imagine. But the way he along with his nation perished is a lesson for all Muslims to remember. This is the spine-shaking story of Shaddad. The nation of Ayad lived in a place called Al-Aqqaf, an area in the southern part of the Arabian Peninsula, specifically in the region of Hadramaut in modern-day Yemen. Al-Aqqaf is known for its desert landscape, with vast dunes and rocky terrain. The ancient civilization of Ad is said to have built impressive structures and lived in grand cities. The Shada'adian architectural style is characterized by its harmonious blend of nature and built environments. It reflects the culture's profound respect for the natural world, with structures that seamlessly integrate into the landscape. The buildings often follow the contours of the land, using the terrain to their advantage in creating functional and visually stunning spaces. Shadadian architects favored the use of locally sourced sustainable materials, such as stone, wood, and clay. The buildings were designed to be resilient against the elements, taking advantage of natural light and ventilation. The structures were often adorned with intricate carvings and ornamentation inspired by the flora and fauna of the region. Allah Almighty mentions this nation in the Holy Quran, saying He created no nation like them. Allah Almighty had bestowed countless blessings upon this nation. They are mentioned in Quran as the people who Allah blessed with strength, power, and prosperity. They were granted vast lands, fertile soil, and abundant resources, including water, fruits, and livestock. Allah had given them these blessings as a test to see if they would be grateful and obedient to Him. Prophet Hud, peace be upon him, started preaching to them according to the command of Allah Almighty, calling them towards the oneness of Allah Almighty. But they did not cease polytheism and started mocking Prophet Hud. Another heinous crime committed by the people of Hud was their engagement in various forms of immorality and indecency. They engaged in adultery, fornication, and homosexuality, and other forms of sexual deviance. This was a direct violation of the moral code prescribed by God and a sign of their moral corruption and decay. To emphasize on homosexuality, it is considered among the higher sins in the theology. In the four major Sunni schools of thought, Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi'i, and Hanbali, the punishment for engaging in homosexual acts ranges from severe lashing to the death penalty. The specific punishment and the method of its execution can depend on factors such as the marital status of the individuals involved, the circumstances surrounding the act, and the availability of witnesses. Coming back to the topic, in addition to these sins, the people of HUD were also guilty of oppression and injustice. They mistreated the weak and vulnerable members of their society, such as the orphans and the poor, and denied them their rights and freedoms. This was a clear violation of the principles of justice and equity, and a sign of their moral bankruptcy. Allah Almighty sent Prophet Hud to them for their guidance. The people of Ad became arrogant, disobedient, and oppressive towards the weak and the poor. They denied the existence of Allah and the Day of Judgment and mocked the Prophet Hud. According to the Quran, they were tall like lofty pillars and unmatched in power. Despite their physical prowess, the people of Ad turned away from the worship of Allah. They did not listen to the warnings of the Prophet Hud. Allah continued to bestow their blessings, hoping they would turn towards Him. Their arrogance and disobedience persisted, and eventually, Allah punished them severely in the form of a violent windstorm known as the Wind of Sarsar, which destroyed their civilization and wiped out their existence from the face of the earth. The story of the people of Hud serves as a powerful lesson for all of us, regardless of our religious beliefs. It reminds us of the importance of obedience, humility, and morality, and warns us against the dangers of arrogance, disobedience, and sin. In a world filled with temptation and corruption, it is essential that we stay true to the principles of goodness and virtue and strive to live a life of righteousness and piety. Only then can we hope to attain the favor of God and avoid the fate of the people of Hud. But what happened to Shaddad? Shaddad was a king from the lineage of a nation and the ruler of that nation. It is said in traditions that one of them was called Shadid and the other was called Shaddad. Shadid became the first king, but he died early. After his death, Shaddad managed the government. In this way, he became the king of the most powerful nation of Ad. Shaddad was the king of a vast and extensive kingdom. According to some traditions, Shaddad's empire extended from Yemen to Iran, and he subdued great kings by the force of his power. 
Therefore, Prophet Hud tried to convince this unfortunate person, but his heart was also closed. When Prophet Hud called the commander towards the oneness of Allah Almighty and asked him to believe in one God at that time, a robust conversation took place between Shaddad and Prophet Hud, a result of which the commander asked Prophet Hud, What will I gain if I believe in Allah Almighty? Prophet Hud told him, Janat will be halal on you. As soon as he heard the name of Janat, Shaddad asked Hazrat Hud about what Janat is. Hazrat Hud showed Shaddad the map of Janat and told him about its blessings. Upon hearing this, Shaddad smiled but said, This is not huge. I can also make this kind of Janat. Hazrat Hud warned him of Allah's wrath. His warning didn't bulge him. He chose a location in the mountains of Yemen and ordered his people to construct a massive structure with walls of red rubies, a green emerald roof, and a white pearl floor. The construction of Shaddad's paradise was an enormous undertaking involving countless people's labor. Shaddad oversaw the construction and spared no expense in creating the most magnificent paradise possible. The people of Ad worked tirelessly to build the grand structure, carving the stones and jewels perfectly and fitting them precisely. They built gardens with flowing streams of water, honey, milk, and fountains filled with lush greenery and fruit-bearing trees. They constructed pavilions and palaces adorned with precious gems and metals and designed pathways and bridges to connect them. It was decided that until the janat he had built was ready, he would not step foot in his own janat. According to the court's order, when the paradise construction began, Shaddad became impatient and waited for the completion of his heaven with eagerness in his palace. It took 12 years for Shaddad's paradise to be ready, decorated with precious jewels and adorned with beautiful art. As Shaddad's paradise nears completion, will his followers begin to question his motives and seek a way out of their doomed fate, or will they continue to follow their misguided king blindly? As soon as the message arrived that his paradise was ready, Shaddad was overjoyed and set out toward heaven with his army to see it. Before reaching the gates of paradise, Shaddad saw a person standing before him and recognized him as the angel of death. Shaddad told his companions he would not allow this person to enter paradise. When the companions asked who the person was and why he was not allowed to enter heaven, Shaddad replied that he was the angel of death and had come to take his soul. He also said that the angel of death would not allow him to enter paradise. Shaddad then requested some time to stay in his paradise, but the angel of death replied that Allah had ordered him to take Shaddad's soul and place it in heaven. Shaddad felt sorrow and regret before the angel of death, but the angel of death completed Allah's order by taking Shaddad's soul. After the death of Shaddad, Hazrat Jibrail let out a mighty scream, and the entire paradise that the leader had created disappeared into the earth and vanished. Despite Hazrat Hud warning the people of the Ad tribe twelve times, they did not believe and instead took the death of their leader as a cure. Hazrat Hud tried to scare the Ad tribe by repeatedly telling them the consequences of their leadership but they were unsuccessful and continued to disobey Allah. When the people of Ad did not follow the right path, Allah ordered Hazrat Hud to leave the area with his companions. Hazrat Hud tried to persuade them to come with him, but they did not listen, so he went with his companions. For more content, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. It's the best way never to miss a video. These videos appearing on your screen will enhance your knowledge about our Islamic history. So make sure you check these out. May Allah betoze us with the ability to walk on the path of Hazrat Muhammad.